All right, so we are entering our third flipped lesson today. Uh, we're talking today about waves. We're specifically going to be talking a lot about sound waves, but we're going to be talking about how waves behave, um, which is not unique to only sound waves. It's any type of wave. And just like you have the last couple weeks, make sure you complete the lab before doing this. Uh, this is going to give you kind of a visual of some of the things that we're going to be talking about today. So what is a wave? Now a wave, um, it's not a physical thing. It's actually just energy. So a wave can be described as not, not, a, uh, not like water traveling through, but a, rather as a disturbance that travels through a medium from one spot to the other spot. And we'll use this term medium. Um, a medium is just like the physical thing that it travels through. It could be water, it could be air, um, it could be space. So depending on what it is that we're talking about, we'll have different uh, mediums. Uh, the wave model is what we're gonna be talking about today that describes some basic properties of what's going on and um, emphasizes the wave behavior that is common to all waves. So we're gonna talk a lot about sound waves in this unit, but uh, this unit, really is the basis if you're getting into the engineering aspects and learning about other types of waves like electromagnetic waves they all experience the same kind of stuff but um so the behavior is the same throughout but every wave is is unique in its own way so we could talk about optics and talk about light waves we could talk about electromagnetic waves we could talk about sound waves we could talk about water waves it doesn't matter they all have the same behavior uh, regardless of the type of way that we're analyzing. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about traveling waves, and that is an organized disturbance. And we can quantify, we can make predictions, and um, it travels with a well-defined wave speed. So a traveling wave is what we're going to be looking at throughout the course of this, uh, the rest of this unit. So we're going to focus a lot on mechanical waves. And we're, mechanical waves are waves that involve the motion of a substance, um, and the waves are traveling through that substance. So on the picture on the right here, we have um, a water wave. Now the disturbance was caused maybe by a rock being thrown into the water, and that rock has creates this energy that propagates out from where it hit the water, and it moves out. So the disturbance is actually the rippling of the water surface, and the water itself is the medium. And the medium is the substance that the wave travels through. A disturbance is what causes the start of the wave. So right now, as I'm talking to you, I'm manipulating the air molecules around me, starting with my larynx, and it travels out, and that's how sound travels. And the medium that it travels through is air. Um, and then, of course, now it, there's some other more involved things happening because yes, it's traveling through air, but then it's getting recorded on my iPad, but we're not gonna get into that right now. So mechanical wave, um, it tra it's created by the disturbance. The disturbance is the source of the wave. Once it's created, it travels outward through a well-defined speed known as the wave speed. Now, a wave transfers energy. The medium itself does not travel. So let's, let's think about that. Even when I'm, right now I'm on my iPad, but when I'm talking in class, I'm creating sound waves that are traveling through the air. And those sound waves are traveling because of the energy that I use to create those sound waves. So it's not the actual molecules from my throat that are hitting you in your ear, that would be pretty disgusting, uh, but rather it is the energy that I created with my voice box and that those molecules spread that energy out. It's a rippling effect as it spreads out until eventually it hits your ear. Your eardrum vibrates at the same rate that the molecules were moving and that is how you can hear me. So a wave transfers energy. It doesn't actually transfer material. The, the, the material itself is not traveling, the energy is traveling out. So there are other types of waves out there as well. Um, a big one are electromagnetic waves. That's a very common uh, one to examine. That includes things like visible light, radio waves, microwaves. Uh, electromagnetic waves are actually unique because they don't actually require a medium to travel through. Obviously, sunlight comes from the sun. 
And in space, there is no medium. So they actually use a concept of an alternating electric and magnetic um, field, and they oscillate off of each other, which allows them to propagate through space. Not anything you have to understand for this class, uh, but it is something that it is a big area of physics. Another big area of physics comes from this concept of modern physics. Modern physics just means it's a, it's a topic we probably won't get to this year, uh, but it just means that everything we've learned is wrong when we're looking at this specific thing. And one of those things is matter waves. And matter waves are wave-like characteristics of particles. So even though particles you would think fall under particle physics, like they move in a straight line at a velocity or whatever, um, electrons and atoms actually have wave-like properties, which make them very unique, um, unlike a person who has particle-like properties. So uh, some interesting uh, things when you start to examine very specific categories of life. So uh, normally I like to do this in class, but there are two main general classes of waves. We have transverse waves and longitudinal waves. Now, um, a transverse wave, as you can see on the, the left here, is a wave that moves up and down. So um, what I normally do is I get a big long spring, I stretch it out, and I quick go up and down with the spring. And that wave then will actually travel in the direction that I put the energy. Now, this is a really great example because notice that it's not the actual rope that's moving, it's the energy of that rope. So a transverse wave allows the energy to move up and down as it propagates through the medium, which in this case is a rope or a spring. Now, the motion will be at a well-defined speed. Um, we can actually quantify that, the velocity of a string the velocity of a wave on a string, you don't need to know this, don't worry, is the square root of the tension in the string divided by the linear mass density, where the linear mass density is mass per unit length. Why did I tell you that? Well, um, so the wave speed has, um, it's defined by the tension and the thickness of the rope. And a great example of this is guitar or any stringed instrument, violin, viola, cello, bass. They all use waves to, and they oscillate up and down or technically left and right. Um, and those waves go ahead and they resonate and they make frequencies. So uh, that's a great application of this. Now, the other type of wave that we can look at are longitudinal waves. And longitudinal waves go in and out. So um, you should have seen this in the... Uh, the the video or the the lab but there's a little bit of a compression and that that compression is caused by a push or a pull of by the person and that compression is what travels at of course some speed so um, a great example of this is sound so sound is a longitudinal wave now when i talk out the energy goes out, it hits the molecules, and those molecules go back and forth and they travel through the air. So the in the longitudinal wave, the particles move parallel in the direction, and in a transverse wave, um, the particles move perpendicular to the direction. So a transverse wave would be like a water wave going up and down. Um, a longitudinal wave is like a sound wave going back and forth. Now when we're looking at a string, um, and as the wave travels, you can kind of think of it as, if I'm looking at one point right here, it's that energy is going through that point. It's moving to the right. Now, there are all sorts of forces going on with that. Let's, let's not worry too much about that because uh, that's just obnoxious, right? So as that wave reaches the point, so we're talking about point one right here, as the wave reaches the point, that energy is going to go through that particle or that point on the uh, on the string and that's going to cause a net force and it's going to cause it to go up now we go to point two over here that energy is continuing to go through the wave and there are still forces going on that's going to cause that wave to come back down so after the peak is passed the string leads to a net force that pulls it back down we don't really care about the forces going on all we care about is that the energy goes through point one and point two and that's what makes that shape occur so every point on that string is moving perpendicular to the motion of the wave. So that we know then a string is a transverse wave. So, the, so as, I, as that wave travels out, 
then every point on that string is going to experience that energy. And as that energy goes, it's going to cause it to go up and down. And some type of external force, maybe a person holding that, made that happen. So something created that pulse. But once it started, the pulse will continue to move because of forces and other things. So one of the things I always joke around about is like, uh, when you say something, you can't take it back, right? There's no way that you can stop that energy going out from when you say something. So uh, it's, it's a stupid analogy, but once I say something, I cannot take those words back. So we have a quick check here, and it's we're looking at this point on a string um, as the wave is going. So the wave is moving to the right. So this point on the string experiences the energy. And it, it, as you can see, what's behind it is going to move through it. So this portion of the wave right here is going to move through that point, and that is going to cause that to go up. Sound waves are my favorite wave to talk about. There, there's just so much we can really get into. Uh, if you take AP Physics, I, I, I talk way too much about sound waves, uh, but that's okay. So uh, the way that sound waves work, and you can, if you have, if you have good speakers at home. Um, it's a great thing that you can experience. Um, so on your computer, if you can see the speakers, you see that there's just a cone here and that cone just goes in and out. And all that cone is doing is compressing the air that's in front of it. So if you go to Google, I, I think I've mentioned this a million times, if you Google frequency generator, Okay, so Google Frequency Generator, there's a, there's, there's a million of them out there, um, but set your, set your computer speakers to like 10 hertz and make sure you crank up the volume. Now, we don't actually perceive 10 hertz. Pe people don't really hear it, but what you'll see is you'll start to see the cone go in and out. And you can do this at two hertz, right? It, it doesn't matter. So that cone goes in and out. Now, as that frequency gets higher and higher, this cone goes in and out faster and faster. And the compression of that speaker is the disturbance that's traveling through the air. Uh, you might have also seen this before as this Air Zooka. I mean, they, they've been at like Spencer's Gifts forever, you know? Like you pull the air, you, there's like a little, um, on the right-hand side, there's, there's like an elastic band. You pull it back and you release and it shoots air out. And it's because it's compression. So now with, with the speaker now, we know there's this fundamental equation, and we're going to be talking about this quite a bit, that velocity equals frequency times wavelength. Now velocity is the speed of sound. That is governed by the medium. So that doesn't change. So what's going to happen is that frequency, the more and more you go up, um, that wave's going to travel out. And because it's going up, the it's moving back and forth faster and faster. The wavelength's going to get shorter and shorter. So we're going to talk a lot uh, about some of that stuff going through this uh, unit. So we actually manipulate sound waves a little bit and talk about them. And sound is a longitudinal wave. It's going in and out. And we have an area of compression because there is the speaker that just kind of moves forward and back, and that causes this area of compression. And the medium determines the wave speed, and that is, of course, air. So wave speed itself is always governed by the medium, by whatever thing it travels through. So with sound, it's air. With uh, water, it's water. <laughs> um, so it, it, the medium determines how fast it travels, and the medium is what's carrying the wave. Now, the speed, I've already mentioned this before, but the speed for like a guitar um, is the square root of the tension in the string divided by the linear mass density. So the wave speed is determined by how fat the string is. Sorry, here's how fat the string is. And then also with the guitar, you can tune it. So um, we know that, I just mentioned this, velocity equals frequency times wavelength. If I make this, I have these, these tuning things here, the tuning knobs, and as I make it tighter, that actually speeds that wave up. Now the length of the strings stay the same. So the faster that velocity gets, the wavelength stays the same, the frequency goes up. So as I tight, 
tighten up a guitar, it's going to make it play higher and higher pitches. And then different strings on the guitar, because of this linear mass density, they're also going to play different pitches. The fatter the string, the larger the linear mass density, the smaller the velocity, the lower the frequency. So there's all these consequences. Now, you don't have to be able to explain all this, but it's cool to know and be able to understand why things work. And that is, of course, the point of this class. If you're in here for other reasons, um, you should double check your choices. So wave speed is property of the medium. We just talked about this. Um, strings are a great example. The tension in the string and the linear mass density is what determines how fast the wave travels. So I've already talked about this quite in depth a couple times. So we have two different waves here, or two different pulses here traveling through a string, and they are traveling around the same string. Now, B has a greater amplitude than A, but which is true? Well, which true is their speeds are the same, which might be weird because you're like, well, there's more energy in B. That is true, but wave speed is a property of the medium. So with sound waves, um, the speed of sound in air actually changes what type of air it is. Some of you may, might have heard or seen people play with helium and helium, when you ingest helium, it's got a much lower density. So it actually travels a lot faster and higher velocity um, because of this fundamental wave equation, higher velocity, higher frequency. Uh, if you were in my class first semester, you might have seen me play around with something called sulfur hexafluoride. Sulfur hexafluoride has a very, very, very high density. It's much denser than air. Uh, so if you ingest it improperly, you can actually drown. Um, but that has a much, 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 much lower frequency velocity. So you also get a lower frequency. Now in air, um, we'll just assume that the velocity is 343 meters per second. Now, there's actually a slightly better formula for this that I will never make you guys memorize, but the velocity of sound is 330 meters per second plus 0 0.6 meters per second per degree Celsius. So it's times the temperature in degrees Celsius. So the hotter and hotter it gets, um, the faster and faster sound travels. So we assume at, at, at 20 degrees Celsius, um, this is approximately 343 meters per second. So um, we'll always assume that velocity of sound is 343 meters per second. And I think I'll, I might go through an example later on, if Miss Tear lets me, where I talk about tuning and the importance of tuning. So whenever you play an instrument, you got to warm up first. And the reason you warm up first is because that gets the chamber of the instrument hotter and hotter. Well, the hotter and hotter that it gets, the faster and faster the sound moves, and because velocity equals frequency times wavelength, as the sound moves faster, the pitch gets higher. So as you warm up, you start to get sharper and sharper relative to how you started. Conversely, uh, if you're in marching band in the fall, it gets really, really cold out. So as it gets colder and colder, your velocity gets lower and lower, so your frequency gets lower and lower as well. So you have to change the length of your instrument, which is how you tune. Hopefully by this point, you've gotten used to the repetition that wave speed is a property of the medium. This is just a table of the velocity of sound through different substances, such as air, right? So when we change the temperature of air, it changes the velocity of sound. Helium, that's why it makes your voice sound different, right? So there's different speeds of sound depending on the medium. So. Uh, going back to the wave speed is a property of the medium. We talked about this already. The medium determines how fast that wave travels. Anytime that we have an electromagnetic wave, though, it travels at the speed of light, 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Now, it's actually slightly slower uh, in air than it is in vacuum, but it ends up being really, really not um, pretty negligible how much it changes. So all electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light. And this is actually very... Uh, complex concept, but it has to do with electronic waves and magnetic waves oscillating with each other and then traveling through space or whatever they're traveling through. So when we're looking at the wave anatomy and some of you, I, I always go through this because some of you are already know all this and some of you might not. So waves we always we always look at sinusoidal waves, and we've already talked about this. We've talked about the dis, we've talked about the resting point. We talked about the amplitude, and the wave travels or 
oscillates back and forth between the amplitude and the negative amplitude. That's actually from simple harmonic motion. Now, there is a few other things, though, that we can talk about. The crest is the highest point in the wave. The trough is the lowest point in the wave. And the wave travels with some velocity, which we already talked about. The wavelength is the distance from crest to crest. Or you could go from trough to trough. So the, the wavelength travels, or as the wave travels, the think of the wavelength as how far... Um, the crests are apart. So the amplitude, we already said, is the maximum value of displacement, and it goes back and forth between the amplitude and the negative amplitude. Now the period of the wave, we've talked about period before, the period is the time between successive peaks. And we can relate the period to the frequency as the, they're inverses of each other. So here's, here's how you can remember this. Um, if you're if you're sitting in water and you're watching these water waves travel, the period is as you're bobbing up and down, it's how long it takes you to bob from up at the highest point, down and back up to the highest point. That is the period. The frequency is if I'm standing to the side and I count the number of waves that pass me every second. So again, they're very similar to each other, but slightly different. Sound waves, We're, I, I, you knew I was gonna talk more about them. So as the cone and the speaker moves forward, we know that it creates these areas of compression. But after it moves forward, it also has to move backwards. So that creates these areas of what we call rarefraction. So a compression has a lot of molecules in a very little space. So that lot of molecules um, means that it has a lot of pressure. And pressure is something we talk about in fluid dynamics, um, which we haven't learned this year. But pressure, think of like tire pressure, right? It's high pressure. It's a lot of molecules in a little area. And then we get these areas of low pressure. And these low pressure areas are where the molecules are spread more apart. And we kind of cheat in physics and we say, okay, well, atmospheric pressure, let's call that our resting point. Let's call our compression, our area of high pressure, which is above atmospheric pressure. Let's call our rarefraction an area of low pressure, which is below atmospheric pressure because it's stretching those molecules out. And we can actually take our longitudinal wave, which is sound waves, and we can turn them into a transverse wave, which is like a wave going through a string or something. So we can actually model them exactly the same. And like I said, there's so many different waves out there, but they all follow or they all resemble similar properties. So I've been saying this, I've said it probably 15 times today, and this isn't even that long of a video yet. Um, we know that velocity is distance over time, okay? Well, the distance that that wave travels is the wavelength, the time is the period. Well, the period is one over the frequency. So I get, in terms of frequency, I get this equation right here. This is known as the fundamental wave equation. And this fundamental equation, although it's so simple, and it comes from our simple concept, right? Velocity is distance over time, are you kidding me? This equation explains so much with waves. It's so important. Um, it's so easy to memorize, not that I have you memorize any formulas, but this helps us explain so many phenomena with waves. So it's a really awesome equation. It's very important and it's very simple. So win, 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 right? Now we can get into a lot of other things and some of you are familiar with this one. So I thought we'd talk about it a little bit and that's getting into the loudness of sound. So we know that the velocity of sound is a property of the medium, and that's 343 meters per second. Then why is it that sound can be louder or quieter if they all travel at the same speed? Well, the wave speed doesn't determine how loud something is. It's the intensity of that, of that wave. So something like you know an airplane versus somebody talking. They have much, much, much different intensities. And we can actually quantify this naturally. That's why we're in physics class. Uh, we're not going to get too much into that, but the concept of intensity is how intense the sound is. It's how much power the source is putting out 
and equally important, how far away you are from the source. So even when I'm lecturing in class, people in the front row hear me at one volume. People in the back row don't hear me at, I'm just kidding. They hear me at a different volume. And this is because as the waves travel out, the energy also moves out in all dimensions. So the the intensity will will kind of die down the further away you get. And we treat this, like here's my source in the middle right here. We treat this like the waves that are going out. Now imagine when you're right up, uh, right up close in this first ring, right? All that energy is, is spread around this circle and you're getting quite a bit of it. Now, if you're really far away, all the energy, oh my God, it's all the way going to this circle. So you're getting a much smaller amount of that total energy or that total power that came from that source. Now in uh, psychology, in physics, whatever, we quantify sound with the decibel scale. And many of you are very, very familiar with this. Um, the decibel scale is a easy way for us to measure the loudness of sound. It's how we quantify it. Now, zero decibels means that that is known as the threshold of hearing. And what that means, if going back to my last slide, intensity is power over area, right? So anything that's zero decibels, you can't physically pick up. What is, what is that based on? It's based on a human average. So most people wouldn't hear this. Um, and that means, think about it this way. <laughs> uh, I'm talking right now into my iPad. Um, you don't actually hear me as I'm talking right now. You're watching a video of me later, right? So as I'm actually talking right now, sound waves are traveling out, but people that are outside my house can't even hear me. Uh, but when a plane flies overhead, it's super loud and many, many people can hear it. Um, and that's because it has more decibels. So we, ex we, we can quantify the sound intensity in decibels. So we do measure sound using the decibel scale. So something you can actually do yourself is go on your phone and download a decibel reading app. There's tons of free ones out there. And you can see where different places, um, how where they lie on the decibel scale. Now, I've already said this before, but the threshold of hearing, that's where people can't hear anything quieter than that. That's zero decibels. Now, the scale is not like a linear scale. It goes up by a power of 10 because that's how logs work. So if I go from zero to 30, I'm still actually quiet, right? Classroom during test taking. But if I go from 30 to 60, now I'm normal conversation a meter away, which is still pretty quiet. But if I go from 60 to 90, now I'm actually at right in front of Niagara Falls, right? Listening to the crushing water. So it's super, super loud. And if I go from 90 to 130, I'm at the threshold of pain. And the threshold of pain means that it's so intense that it physically hurts you. So um, a very quick upgoing scale. Most of our lives, we live between 60 and 80 decibels. Uh, important to note that any prolonged exposure above 80 decibels can actually cause long-term damage to your hearing. So one really cool uh, consequence of sound waves is this thing known as the Doppler effect. Um, I could spend days talking about this, but instead I'm just going to tell you to check out this video. There's some really cool things in it. Uh, explains the concept of the Doppler effect and how it applies to not only sound waves, but also light waves. So it's a consequence of any time that we have either the source of sound or whoever's observing the sound is moving. So really cool thing. Check it out. All right, so all that you have left is homework for week three. We, you should have done the lab going into today um, and filled out the organizer as you're watching this. And now you just got some practice questions that deal with the content that we learned today. Uh, everything is relatively conceptual. We're not gonna get super specific, but um, let me know if you have any questions with the homework.